folks, welcome back. All right, so this this book here is one of the reasons why um, I talk about the issue of school choice in black folks. This book is called The Education of Blacks in the South, 1860 to 19, 1935. It's by James D. Anderson. What he says in his book, and he's a professor at the University of Illinois uh, Urbana-Champaign. Urbana black people have done school choice since slavery. <laughs> He lays it out that black people from day one have fought, were fighting for their kids and that they did not like the current system. Kenneth, what he also lays out is that when we came through Jim Crow, yeah. we created HBCUs yep. because we didn't like the system. Yep. What he also lays out that we created our own schools during Jim Crow. Yep. We created freedom schools during the, the black during freedom the summer. movement. Absolutely. So when people sit here and say that black folks uh, are against school choice, we have been for our kids since slavery, yeah. but we have been pimped and pimped, but played by a lot of people yeah. to somehow think, oh no, this is a bad idea for black people to actually to rebel against a system that is not educating their children. Absolutely right. And, and, and the, the interesting thing about that is uh, it was actually poor white people who actually went along with folks who said you don't need to really be educated. Only certain people need to be educated. Black people came out of slavery saying education is our ticket to freedom. And so for the longest time we've been involved in this, the, the parent choice, school choice movement. Uh, we created black independent schools. If you go around this country right now, some of the most high performing charter schools are started by black educators, black community leaders. Uh, so this quest to make sure that our kids get into quality schools is not a new thing by any you know, stretch of the imagination. Bob, and, and this is most important for people need to understand for me at home. This is to me is not an issue of I believe the charter schools are just perfect. I made it perfectly clear that they're charter schools that have no accountability, that are failing our kids, shut them down. Same with traditional schools. But this is this is how I define school choice. I look at education as this big old pie. And there's a slice for private, there's a slice for public, there's a slice for charters, for magnets, for vouchers, for homeschool, online school, it goes down the whole line. It all based upon the kid. There are some children right. who frankly, exactly. they can excel on right. online school. Right. Not every kid can do that. But I don't say take the online option away because for some kids that might work. Perfect. As long as the kid getting educated, it works. And if we go to New York, Eagle Academy is a traditional school, it's an all male school. But you have people who are against school choice because they don't like all male, all female schools. So it's like, Jesus, it makes no <laughs> sense to me. Well, some, some of the charters only chose kids kicked out of public schools right. that the public schools have failed. They say, give us your worst kids. Yeah. Marva Collins yeah. at the Northside Academy in Chicago, you know, she was almost stoned to death by yeah. public school teachers when she took the worst of the worst kids and they were performing so well yeah that rich white folks were busing their, I mean, driving their kids in from the suburbs to go to her school because there was a presence of excellence. And it is, but again, I go back to hypocrisy. The opponents do, don't have to suffer the consequences of their advocacy. Right. Angela, what gets, uh, what, the, the reason I, I, this re, I mean, I'm obviously I'm passionate about it is because education and economics are both tied. Yeah, absolutely. And at the end of the day, if you look at the current numbers, Black folks are not going to be in position for the greater economic opportunities in the next generation. And so the real, the real challenge to me for this generation, what are they gonna say about us? Yeah. 20, I, 30 years from now and yeah. saying, what the hell were y'all doing and, when and we were kids? I think that that's exactly right. And part of this, again, I was thinking about that on the break, the cycle of, well, there's school choice for those who can afford to choose schools for their children and can afford to put their kids in the best situations to watch them succeed. And so often, this is an argument about lower income families, which again are overwhelmingly people that look like us. So I think that we have to figure out a way to address the cycle. Um, I think that if that means that we can't say these buzzwords because they set people off, fine, but we need to go back to the drawing board about how to succeed. Paris, when, when we talk about that, I gave a speech uh, Saturday to uh, the Alpha chapter in Tampa, Florida. And they wanted me to focus on mentoring. And, and in the middle of my speech, I literally said, I said, wait a minute. I said, black Greeks literally have the most inf sophisticated infrastructure in black America. International groups, national leadership, regional, state, grad chapters, undergrad chapters. I said, why, I said, why are we having mentoring programs? I said, if we have charter schools all across the country, alphas, deltas, AKs, kappas, sigma gamma rho, sigmas, I said, we should be saying, 
we're going to be running our own network of charter schools. Imagine if you had, if, if you five largest black fraternities and sororities said our goal by, by three years from now is to have 50 charter schools across the country. Average 500 kids, 500 kids in a school, that's 125,000 kids. Yeah, that's a great idea and it's a great model because it's, it's showing it's that if you want to be in a fraternity or sorority like the, like the, you have to be in college. And the way things are going right now, all of our talented kids will not have the opportunity to get to that level and join these fraternities and sororities. And so it is a way of giving back. It's a way of uh, training these, these students so that they can get to college, but also be in these organizations. But you have to start at that, at that small level, yeah. elementary level. And, and you know, you have the Deltas doing that in Detroit right now. You know, which is which is truly phenomenal. They're starting a charter school in one of the most challenged cities uh, in America, uh, and I think that's a big way for them to step up. And I certainly encourage others yeah. to do the same thing. That's incredibly important. But Bob, I want us to also study what works. You mentioned Marva Collins. There is no reason in the world there is not a pilgrimage right now <laughs> going to her home in Georgia where she is retired, <laughs> right. saying. How, because look, you do it before she goes on to glory. How in the world did you get kids who could not read, but you get them reading Shakespeare by the second exactly. semester? Yeah. How did you do it so we can tape it, record it, have it for history's sake? Yeah, we supported a group of 200 uh, 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 independent schools, Providence St. Mel in Chicago, Lilla Green School in uh, Philadelphia, all uh, taking kids from the inner city and demonstrating it that they can learn. Right. All we lack is the will. And you're right, right Roland. The question is, there what, there's a crisis in, in of imagination, and yeah. and and so. But when you have educators who have stepped up and demonstrated that they can teach these kids, the question is, why aren't they generating the kind? Why don't they become our celebrities? Right. Well, right. Here's the deal, folks. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be uh, staying on this whole thing, this idea that school choice is the black choice, uh, because there's no way in the world we can sit here and look at our kids today and not do what is right for them in every possible way. Uh, and so this has to be part of our conversation. And we say education is the most important thing for us. Well, then step up, because there's no way in hell for me in a generation of black people who didn't even have a second grade education, right. but they had kids, 10 and 12 kids, who all went to college, who all got education, because mom and daddy said, no matter what happens, your behind is going to get an education. Well, we need the exact same thing today. So I certainly appreciate it. Thanks a bunch, folks. Thank you. Uh, we'll have the conversation again.